All right, so how many of you feel the momentum building in the, the, uh, the spiritual momentum building in the room tonight? Anybody? I can feel it. I can feel it, and I don't know if I'm going to need a towel, but if, if someone could get it ready just in case, because some of y'all know I'm a, I'm a sweater, I get moving. Join the club. Join the club, all right. <laughs> hey, man, I don't have a 50 for you, but if I did, man, I'd help you out. <laughs> How many of you know this man got blessed with a $50 bill? Man. And I love that. I love that. Be, get, stay in the right place and watch God bless you for being in the right place at the right time. I love that. All right, so... Um, I, don't know, I, I wanted to honor each and every one of you for coming out tonight, for taking your time tonight uh, to invest in the rest of your life. Because like I said, I, I, I truly do believe that in one moment, everything can change. You know this as well as I do, that it only takes one hit before you're back on the street. It only takes one hit before you can lose your family. It only takes one hit, or one drink, one view, one whatever it is, and you can lose absolutely everything. And you know that just as much as you can gain momentum, you can what? Lose. Lose momentum. And so what I like to do is I like to gain momentum. So when I wake up in the morning, now, now that I've been clean and I've been walking with God and I've been serving and doing what needs to get done on a, on a regular basis, by the grace of God, I've been clean for over 13 years and I give God all the glory for that. I give God all the glory for that. But how that's been made possible for me is that I put one foot in front of the next. I live intentionally. So when I wake up in the morning, and I want to talk to you about this, this whole momentum thing from a, from the, in, in the context of a day. In the context of a day, because we tend to confuse things. And, and when we get too far ahead of ourselves, we tend to lose ourselves. When we, when we get ahead of ourselves, we tend to lose ourselves because we're meant to find ourselves in the moment. And the moments that we have, we need to, to grab a hold of them. Because, see, there's many opportunities that go before us, but there are moments that God shows up. There's moments that good things come across your path, and you have to take hold of them before you miss them. Because if you miss them, you miss out on what's attached to them. And what's attached to those blessings, what's attached to that stuff is good stuff. And we're going to talk about it. But you know what it is. A lot of you have already experienced it. Some of us, because we've lost momentum... We've lost those things that were attached to it. And um, so this momentum, you know, I was um, looking at it from this perspective. Is momentum is force or speed of movement. Sometimes we force our way into things that we were never created for. See, this is the thing that I learned in my, in, in, in my addiction is it, because it didn't just lead me to getting high. It led me to do things, like I said, that I would never do. I lived ways I said I'd never live. I, I never thought I would live homeless. I never thought that I would live in a, in, a, in, in, a, in a house that had nothing in it except for like a, maybe a half box of macaroni and cheese in, in, a, in a bed, in a coffee table, in an ashtray. I wasn't created and designed to live like that. And so I, I, I forced my way into things. Sometimes I, I had to force my way to even get there. And, and, and that, to me, felt like I was building momentum. It felt like I was doing something with my life to the fact that I wasn't living on the street, but at least I had a roof over my head. And even in my addiction, I was, I was grateful for that. But the, my speed and my movement, see, you can use momentum in, in either way. You can use it in your addiction. You can have a fast pace. How many of you lived a fast life in your addiction? Anybody? How many of you lived a real slow, patient life in your addiction? You were one of those... I'm sitting on the couch going to drink myself to death kind of addict, right? I mean, we've all been slow and fast at different moments, but I was part of that, the fast life. And so just like constantly moving. But there's a pace in which you move, whether you're moving in the right direction or you're, or you're moving in the wrong direction, all right? But the question you have to ask yourself is, what is my pace? How are you pacing yourself now that you're in rooms like this, how are you pacing yourself? So, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about pacing, and I'm not much of a runner, but when I run, I like to get into it. And, but, you know, sometimes we pace ourselves as walking. And sometimes we pick it up a little bit and we start jogging. And then we start running, right? 
We, start, we pace ourselves accordingly to however we decide we're going to move. You see, sometimes you're called to move slow. Sometimes you're called to move a little bit faster. And, and, and other times you're called to move at a higher pace. You just got to know what place you are in right now. Are you in a, in, a, in a walking mode? Are you in a jogging mode? Or are you in a running mode? Because if you find yourself walking when you're supposed to be running, you'll hit in the wrong direction. But if you're supposed to be running and you find yourself walking, you'll find yourself in the wrong direction. Right? Does that make sense? I don't know. I just piece that one together. So, um, <laughs> but it's one day at a time. We know that. This is one day at a time. So take it one day at a time. Take each day as it comes and deal with things as they happen. And not to make plans or to worry about the future. Right? This is learned day by day. Thank you. You know what time. As... as as Steve Huffman says, I'm, 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 I'm glistening. Is that the word? Glistening from my forehead. All right. Which just continues to get further and more and more. I just made it worse. Let me cover that up. All right. If people just took it a day at a time, they'd be a lot happier. Because the Bible talks about how in, it, within one day, there's enough worry in itself. There's enough concern. There's enough there's enough in one day to take care of, the why, are, why do we spend so much time worrying about tomorrow or the next day or a month later or two months later or a year later? Now, don't get me wrong. It's good to have plans. And we have calendars that have pretty much calendared out the whole year, you know? But the, but the reality is, is if you focus on all the things that are laid out for a year, but you forget about what's going on right now, you'll miss out on what's happening right now. And the pace, it's easier to pace yourself when you're living it one day at a time. Right. You're less likely to relapse when you're living one day at a time. And you're doing the right thing. And you're living at the right pace. You've got to learn to pace yourself and to understand when it's time to walk, when it's time to jog, and when it's time to run. But it, the, the question really is, how does your day start and how does it progress? What, you got to evaluate your day. I don't know why, but... I just kept thinking about a day. What do you do when you wake up in the morning? I alluded to this before the video, but what do you really, are you thinking about what is going on when you wake up and you get going for the day? It's like, well, most of the time you wake up and take a shower, or you, you know, brush your teeth, get dressed. I mean, do you think about what you're going to wear based upon where you're going, Right. You know, and, 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 and then you think about what you're going to eat. I mean, am I going to eat something heavy? Am I going to eat something light? I mean, am I overthinking this thing? <laughs> right? You know, and then, and, then, and then we have an agenda for the day. What is going on today? And we have things laid out. How many of you have a full-time job? How many of you have a part-time job? How many of you have a half of a part-time job? How many of you just wish you had a job? Amen. There we go. <laughs> How many of you are believing that you're going to get a job like yesterday? Anybody? All right. There we go. We got one guy. And so, you know, we base and we, we lay out the day and, 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 and we see that we can find a momentum based on whatever's planned out for the day. So when you go to work, you typically know what's going to happen, right? You already kind of know what's going to happen. But what, what about those moments within your day at work? that you miss out on because you're just so focusing on the day-to-day -day stuff, the day-to-day -day process or the day-to-day. -day. What about those relationships? Work is more than just work. I don't care where you work. Those jobs, those, job, those things that you are engaged in, when you are working, if you're working hard, the person that you're connected to, I guarantee that God puts you next to them for more than just I'm just going to clean windows or I'm just going to vacuum floors or I'm going to go and deliver this, I'm going to go and do that. See, what you're doing has way more significance behind it than just the, the bare minimum. Or even beyond what you can see with your natural eye. Does that make sense? And so without momentum, your life is it's formless and it's empty. And in the progression of a day, I, I, it led me to, to, to study a little bit Genesis 1, 1 and 2. It says this, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. And maybe you're hearing this and you're thinking to yourself, 
What does this have to do with recovery? Well, just hang in there with me for about 15, 20, 45 minutes to an hour, or however long we go. No, I'm just kidding. But look at it, it says, in our recovery, we need to have a definite shape or structure to our life. I remember when I went through Teen Challenge for the second time, I remember that um, I know that I had, you know, they made me do certain things. In the first time I went through, I knew that they made me do it. You know, and if you had that attitude of it having to be something that you, you are made to do, it's different than, hey, I, man, I have structure in my life. So when, in, in, in the Bible also talks about before you were born, God formed you and he knitted you together in your, in your mother's womb. Do you know that? That God formed you before you ever came up into existence. You existed you were, and you had, God was fashioning you and forming you in your mother's womb. Whether you believe God or not, that was what was happening. <laughs> Whether you believe the process or not, there's a process to life. And that's a touchy subject that I'm not going to go fully into, but I want to guarantee you that there's this life and God's forming it. So when you have it, you, have, you need this definite shape and structure in your life. I know what it was like because when I was going through Teen Challenge and other places to, that followed, they had structure in place. See, some of us need to have structure in place for us. See, some of you were created... To, to, and to operate in that way, and others are meant to operate in ways where you help to bring structure and organization to the place that you're in. But typically when you're in recovery, or whether you're in a treatment or you're out of treatment or whatever the case is, there's a structure and a shape that is being, that is, that is being put together. And, 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 and we're, we're meant to have, and, and, and this emptiness, is you were created to be fruitful and to multiply. So when you put these two things together, this formless, and when you have form in your life, when you have fulfillness in your, fulfillness in your life, you're more likely to build momentum day to day when you have that established in your life. And then when we see this in Genesis, this is in, in relation to creation, but you can definitely apply this to your life. See, no matter how many times you fall, you cannot stay down or play dead because you have been you have been formed and fashioned with destiny you have you, you haven't been called to an empty life you've been called to a full life so when you fall down you can't stay down as if your life is formless you can't play dead as if you can pretend that nothing happened see too many people in recovery play play dead You're just kind of living life. You're just kind of getting by, just doing what's kind of necessary, but not above and beyond. See, when you do above and beyond and you begin to look at the full potential that you, that you have and that others are believing for you, you don't play dead. You keep moving forward. You keep moving forward and facing the trials that come your way. See, too many people are afraid of the trials that are ahead. You can't be afraid of the trials. You can't be afraid of the opposition. When you, when you feel the opposition, you can't just shrink back. You can't pull back when you're about to break through. So in Genesis 1, 3 through 5, and the question I want to ask you on this is, what good things have entered your life today? Because in order to build the momentum in your life in a daily basis, you have to understand that you have been created with a purpose to have form and to be fulfilled. And you see in G Genesis 1, 3 through 5, where then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. And evening passed and morning came, marking the first day. All right, so how does, this apply to, how does this apply to us tonight? So when we, when we look at the things that are entering into our lives, what do, we, what do we look at? Do you even pay attention to what's entering your life every day? The things that you listen to, the things that you look at, the things that you participate in, all those things play a factor on the momentum of how your day is going to go. See, by the, some of us, by the time the first 15 minutes of the day roll by, we're already in negative mode. 
We're already in backsliding mode. We're already backpedaling and we're already going backwards. And we don't like to admit that because we all want to, sometimes, I mean, we want to pretend like everything's going good. And I'll be the first to admit it. The first 15 minutes of my day are sometimes the toughest part of my day. It really is. But it's not how you start the day, it's how you finish the day. See, the first 15 minutes of my day doesn't determine the rest of it, because I know that there's a full 24 hours, and I'm more than likely going to be awake for about 19 of them. At least, probably. Some nights, 21. And I'll catch up on, I'll catch up on the sleep. I don't really believe in catching up on sleep. You just lose it. But I know that when I invest my time, it's a wise investment, right? So what kind of things are entering into our life? See, there's, some, there's something about speaking into your life. What types of things are you allowing to be spoken into your life? See, there are people, places, and things that you need to separate from. Let me say that again. There are people, places, and things that you need to separate from. Because there are those people, some of those people, some of those places, and some of those things are slowing down your momentum. See, there's a God-given momentum. And even in these, in these rooms we see in recovery, God wants us to have a recovery that is successful, that is good, that is fruitful, that is lasting. Do you want to have a recovery that's not lasting? That's not fruitful, that's not good, that's not beneficial to others? I mean, what kind of recovery would that be? What would that look like to have a recovery like that? See, many, many of us, we live in recovery and we forget about other people. We, we focus so much on getting sober that we forget that there's a world that is continuing to go and flow and move. There are things happening every single day, and you're called to be a part of everyday life, which deals with people, places, and things. So what kind of people, places, and things are feeding your life? Right here and right now. Here is one, one night where the people and the place and the things around you are going to help build the momentum of the things that are good for your life. Do you agree? I'm telling you, even sometimes, some of us had to get dragged here. It doesn't matter if you had to get dragged here. God knew you needed to get dragged here. If, if, if you had somebody just nagging on you like, hey, man, you got to check this out because it's really changed my life, man. I'm telling you, this, this life recovery Tuesday night is just amazing. And you're sitting next to me and you're thinking, this isn't that amazing, man. Like, But I'm telling you, if you take hold of this, it's only 722, right? It's only 722. We still have how many? I'm not the greatest at math. How many hours do we have left in this day? Think to yourself for a minute. I'm, I, 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 I'm, I can complicate the daylight side of things, but I, I, I can almost guarantee that this day is going to end at, 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 at what time? How many? Four hours and 38 minutes. Like, who's counting? Right? Who's counting? But what can you do in the next four hours and 38 minutes? You can build momentum. You can get connected to the person sitting next to you and determine, is this somebody I'm supposed to be connected with? The question is, is would, would my life be a benefit if I was hanging out with you? I want to benefit off of your life too. Just like I hope you can benefit off of my life. You know, this is a two, two-way street, but we build momentum. And so we got to be careful of the people, the places, and the things that we're around. Now, at the end of that Genesis 1, 3, and 5, it says that these things happened, and then it, and then it did what? It marked the first day. So there are things that I believe you're supposed to mark in your day that help you to understand the flow of your day. You have to mark some things. You got to mark some. To earlier today, I woke up probably 5.30, and I woke up, and before my family gets up, you want to know how, how I mark my morning. I mark my morning. If I can get up before my kids get up, and I have 
well, six, five in the home. I have six total, but five in the home. And my wife is sleeping in bed. Before everybody gets up, the first thing that I want to do to build momentum in my day is I want to pray for my family. I want to pray for my children. This is part of my recovery. This is what's helped me to stay clean and free for over 13 years. And I, and I still feel the momentum building for another. I mean, for another day. We got at least another one in us. God willing. But I pray for my family, and, and, I, get, and, and I make coffee, and I, I begin to love, and I begin to serve my family. You want to build momentum in your life, start serving somebody else besides yourself. Make coffee for your loved one. Make, you know, invite a friend out for coffee if you got to get out of the house or however you want to work it. But I want to, I want to be a blessing to my family. That's how I build momentum in my, in, my, in my life. But what are you marking in your life as good? Look at this. Now, there are things that you can mark. I, I, mark, these, I, I mark these things, my relationship with God. You know, I want to start out in, my, in the morning and I pray, and I get into the Bible, I read devotional, I, 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 I message some friends that I know are up early, and I began to pour into other people's lives, and I began to do these things because it keeps me sober. It keeps me fresh, it keeps me open to what is happening outside of my own realm because I'm already in my own realm. I already have, I'm going to deal with the issues that come up every day. But if I can also invest in the issues of others, hopefully I can make some kind of a change in somebody else's life besides myself. That, for me, is momentum. Relationship with God is good. What kind of things are good that you can mark in your life? Sobriety is good, but is it everything? It's a lot. But what about peace of mind? Peace of mind is good. Do you ever, you, ever, you ever have such a chaotic life, I mean a chaotic day, and you're just kind of going through it? You just love the chaos. You're just the master of chaos in your own life, right? You ever begin to just love the chaos that's going on in your life? Do you have one room in your house that is just super messy and you love to sit in it? <laughs> Drives me absolutely nuts. I can't stand sitting in a room that's, that's all crazy. I, I got to got to be, you know, clean. What helps you have a peace of mind? A peace of mind is good. Mark those things. Having a sponsor is good. Working the steps are good. Guidance is good. Keeping a job is good. Being a good husband, a good father, a brother, a son. These are good things. Keeping your word is good. Being held accountable is good. What kind of things can you mark as good? To help build momentum. Purity of heart is good. Sacrificial love is good. Extending grace to other people is good. Extending forgiveness to other people. You want to know how to build momentum in your life for the good? Start forgiving somebody. Start being kind to somebody. Start loving somebody. Start loving the unlovable. Give to the poor. Feed the needy. Go out and do something for somebody else. Build momentum in your life by helping somebody else build momentum in their life. Oh. But by marking goodness, you will increase the daily momentum in the right direction. But the question is, is what direction are you heading in tonight? No matter what, no matter where you are tonight, you can change the direction of your life. And it only takes a moment. You ever notice that in the word momentum is the word moment? You have to take hold of the moments in the, in, in the speed, no matter how fast of momentum you're going, no matter how slow of the momentum that is building, I'll guarantee you, you can catch the moments that are there for you to help you build in good things into your recovery. Now, uh, I wanted to bring this up. This was out of um, Psalm 107.20. The question is this, do you recall the door of death? Do you recall the door of death? And, 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 and oftentimes when I'm going through life and, and, and life is getting wild, there's always, a, um, I would say, kind of a, a, a chart of the day. 
You know, every day has its ups and downs, right? Every single day. A lot of times we like to look at our, our week or our month or our year and say, that year was terrible. I had this one thing happen. Right? You, you think that your whole 2017 was bad because your car died on you. And so you completely gave up and you lost momentum because your car died. But that's not the end of the world. Right? That's not the end of the world. And so there's, there are many things that we face in life, but in Psalm 107.20, it says, He sent out his word and healed them, snatching them from the door of death. See, in this passage, you see a couple things. You see something that God does. He sent out his word and he healed them. How many of you have experienced healing in your recovery? I mean, it could have been physical. You, know, you could have went to the doctor and got a good report when you knew that a bad report was probably due for you. Right? How many of you went to a doctor, got a clean bill of health, you knew you should have been dirty? Yeah, a couple. I mean, we... You know what I mean? We should be sicker than we are. <laughs> we should be way sicker than we are. But this is good. This is good. This is, this is God working in our recovery. You know what I mean? He sent out his word and he healed them, snatching them. This is God's quickness to rescue. How many of you have experienced the hand of God or the hand of God working through somebody else to rescue you out of something you knew you should have died in? you got to mark those things. How can you be that extension and that hand of help for somebody else? Do you think that's going to mark some type of a new momentum structure for them? If they bump into you and you got your stuff together, do you know how fulfilling it is to be used in a way for you help to rescue somebody from the door of death? Huh? I mean, anybody experience that, being used in that way? That'll keep you sober for a year, at least. It'll keep you sober for a year, at least. You have one encounter of being used in that kind of a way, it'll change your heart. It'll change your desire to want to stay sober a lot longer than you used to want to stay sober. I don't know if that made any sense to you, but it makes a lot of sense to me, because even though, I'm, I, I, even though I live this thing one day at a time, there are certain things in the momentum of my day that mark a longer period of time that I know, man. Like a pastor had said this not that long ago, man, if God doesn't do anything else, he's done enough. I mean, think of the humility that can go with that in our life as well. Like if God does nothing else, if you experience nothing else in your life, what would your day-to-day -day look like? I mean, I think we can live off of what has happened, but there's a part of us that is hungry for more. we got to be honest with ourselves. There's a part of us that's hungry for more. Look at this. He says that he healed them and he, and he snatched them from the door of death. Now, this is the door of death. How many of you have an understanding of what the door of death is? See, I, I, I remember some doors that I knocked on. And, and in fact, I'll be completely honest, I remember some doors that I kicked in. And, and, and I kicked in the door just to find on the other side of the door was death. I remember that time that I thought I had everything together. I thought I, I, thought I, I, thought I made it over on a couple of these guys because I just wanted to get high. So I figured, you know, they're just... There's a couple of guys, they're all high, they don't know what's going on, so, you know, while they're busy doing their thing, I'll go over here and do my thing. It's a big house, they're busy over here, I'll be busy over here, and then all of a sudden, I find myself at the door of death. You ever found yourself at the door of death? See, I, I never imagined when I was 13, I didn't think at 13 years old, oh man, I think when I'm 13, I'll be, I'll be cooped up in a basement with an AK-47 in my mouth because I just got busted trying to rob a drug dealer. So you don't dream those kind of dreams when you're staying sober anymore, I hope not, because I remember that door of death. See, sometimes we kick in doors that lead to death, they're doors that were never meant to be opened in your life. 
you get high, you get drunk, you dive into all these other things. You know what? You're actually opening doors spiritually and physically that should have never been opened. I'm telling you the truth. You got to stay away from that door. Whatever that door is, you know it. I don't know it. You know it. Say, I know it. <laughs> you do know. You know what that door of death is. I'm telling you, don't even touch the door handle. Don't even touch the door handle. Don't go close to it. Understand that. Because if you'll stop all the momentum that is happening if you do that. But on the other hand of that, I believe that in our recovery, in our day-to-day -day movement, in our daily relationships, it's, it's important to know that we can't stop, we can't try to stop what God is establishing. You know, having had a spiritual awakening as a result, see, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, meaning that there has been a revival in, inside us, you have been revived, you have been, re, what is that word, re, uh, resuscitated, been resuscitated, is that the, been brought back from death to life, you've been resuscitated, there's been some things that have happened, you should have been dead long ago, but there's some things that were being established in your life even while you were in your addiction, but definitely now that you're out or attempting to get out, in Genesis 1, 6 through 8, it's very clear. Then God said, let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And that is what happened. And that is what, look at, when you read, just, just go for yourself. You know, I have people that will talk to me and say they don't believe God, they don't believe the Bible and all that. Just read the book of the first chapter of Genesis for yourself with an open mind. And when you read something like this and you see, look at this is what happened. He says, this, and this is what happened. He says, and this happened. Do we have evidence today that this happened? See, God is pretty big. He can help you in staying sober. He can help you in building momentum. He can help you in making the right decisions. He can help you in getting the things that you need day to day. See, when you evaluate what's happening in your life today, you can determine where you're going. See, because if you don't know, if you can't determine what's happening in your life right now, how are you ever going to make it to what's next? I mean, because if what's next is better than what's happening now, wouldn't you want to get there? Here's the cool thing about God. There's no beginning and there's no end. He keeps moving. He keeps going. He keeps doing. There's a, such a powerful creativity. And, 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 and you got to apply this in your recovery because if you apply it to your recovery, your recovery won't be boring. How many of you are sitting right now in your seat and you just feel bored out of your mind in your recovery? I'm telling you, this is not meant to be boring at all. In fact, I've never had so much fun in my life. But you have to evaluate what's happening. It says, God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. God called the space sky. Do we see the sky? Is it evidence that God exists? So this same God can be applied in your life, and he can help bring order to your life and help to build momentum today, right now, and continue to do it. Now look at this. God called the space guy, and evening passed, and morning came, marking the second day. Look at this just for a second. This is only two days have gone by. What has happened in two days? Paint this picture for yourself. God is doing all this. In creation, he did this in two days, and God never changes. So if God never changes, is his ability to do this type of work still open for today? This makes recovery interesting. Because as we work the steps and we start dealing with our stuff, we start building momentum step after step. We keep building momentum as we look at God's word and we see this is happening. It's marking the second day. But what kind of things are marking your progress? What kind of things are making, are you making any progress in your recovery? 
what kind of progress are you making? The evaluation is not based upon how, how good you are or how many good things that you can do. If it's based upon evaluating what's really going on and finding out is there any value to it. Have you ever thought to evaluate the value of what you have going on in your life? What is the value of visiting that person? Come on. Somebody's got to speak to me. What's the value of visiting that person? What's the value of visiting that place? And what is the value of getting that thing? You can make great progress. So your daily momentum brings daily direction. Look at this. Genesis 1, 9 through 10. We're almost getting ready to wrap up. Genesis 1, 9 through 10 says, Then God let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place so that so dry ground may appear. Do we see dry ground? We see dry ground today still? All right, we see waters beneath the sky. We see the sky, we see the waters, we see the land. And that is what happened. Again, it happened. We see evidence of it. And look at this. God called the dry ground land and the water seas, and God saw that it was good. Look at this. Here we are, and we talked about this in the beginning. See, when, 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 when God said, let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place, it's the same thing that we see right now. We say, here we are in one place building momentum for the good. But what we have to do is try to adjust our mindsets our hearts, and our lives to go in the same direction. How do we possibly do that with a room of about 250 addicts? <laughs> Does that seem, because seem, we all have a different agendas. But even with our different agendas, if we can get on the same page, what do you think Crystal, Minnesota would look like? What do you think Minneapolis, Minnesota would look like if we all had this moment, this, this moment, if we were all on the same page doing the same type of thing, heading in the same direction? We see more people getting clean. We see people with, with you know, with, with strong sobriety, with, with lengthier sobriety. We would see more families getting restored. We would see all kinds of great things happening in, 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 in people's lives around us. But the thing is, 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 is in, in, in when we have this momentum rolling, we have direction. And this is why we're here tonight, because we have good direction. So here's another question. Are you allowing life into your recovery? So look at this, John 1, 4 through 5. And I want to use these last two scriptures to paint the latter part of this picture. So are you allowing life into your recovery? The word gave life to everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. So what, is, what kind of darkness or what types of things have you allowed into your life? What kind of people, places, and things have you allowed in your life to extinguish the, prog the progress, to extinguish the light on the path that's set before you? If God has breathed a fresh breath of life into your lungs today, I'm telling you, that is enough to be grateful for and that is enough to start your day off. Yeah. And you wake up. You have been given everything that you need because God has created you for greatness. God has created you for this thing that's called sobriety and life. He has brought light to light up your path so that you can have clear direction to wherever you go. And when you have the right momentum building in your life, there's no darkness that can extinguish the direction and the momentum that you have going on in your day.
The darkness can never extinguish it. Think of it just for a moment. What would it look like if the momentum that you had going on in your day, that there was no devil in hell that could stop it, there was no temptation to get high or to do something stupid that would stop it. What would it look like in your day if the momentum that you had rolling, nothing could stop or nothing could extinguish? See, some of these things, they seem so lofty, when you put God in it, you think, oh, it's God, so it's on it. There's things that are right in reach of you right now that if you just take hold of it, your recovery will be so strong. When you look at the steps and you see and you, you get a deeper understanding that you are powerless over these things because every time you do reach out for the, for the drugs or every time you reach out for that person or every time you go to that place, whatever it is, you know that you're powerless over certain people, places, and things. So when you go there, you know you're going to get pummeled. Right? You know you're going to get pummeled. You know that it's going to break. You know you're going to be sitting at the door of death. You know that certain things are going to happen. So when you stay away from them, not only are you better for it, but you begin to build a momentum that you can build on tomorrow. Philippians 2.13 says this. See, this is different. And in our, in, our, in our life and in our recovery, we have to be open to what God is speaking to us. And, and, and here's, have you been awakened by God working in you? You know, when, when, when you have a fresh breath of air, of, of, of life, you have, that, you have that every morning. And you begin to do things that build momentum in the right direction, you start to feel like, man, my day is going to be good. And even if you get to the third or fourth hour, and all of a sudden you start getting hit again, all of a sudden you start getting knocked back again, see, you can't lay back and you can't play dead. you got to keep pressing in. You can't stop. You can't move away from the momentum that God's trying to bring you into. And then it... All the things that have been established in your life up to this point have brought you to this place where you're at right now. And now we have how much time before the end of the day? Jim. Four hours now? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, yeah. Four hours and whatever minutes. So we have already just in the last 30 minutes, we've been building momentum in the right direction. You've been building. So what happens when you see that God is working in you right now and he is giving you the desire and the power to do what is pleasing to him? Listen to this and then I'm going to close. You can't try to be like somebody else just because you think that they have it all together. You can't stop and think for a moment that you can compare yourself or classify yourself with somebody else. You have to be you. In your recovery, you may have mentors, you may have leaders, you may have people around you, you might have these things in place, but ultimately, you have to build, you have to develop your daily momentum because no one else is going to wake up for you. No one else is going to step on that floor in front of you. Nobody else is going to step in the shower for you. Nobody else is going to clean up for you. Nobody else is going to eat for you. Nobody else is going to take those steps. For you. you have to do it for yourself. I'm telling you, listen, you cannot afford to awaken your past back to life in your present. I'm going to say this again. You cannot afford to awaken your past back to life in your present. Because whatever you feed will grow and whatever you starve will die. Starve your addiction and let God work in you. I'm telling you, there are some things that you need to starve out of your life. They're killing your momentum. When you're heading in the right direction, sacrifice a little more. When this thing builds, I'm telling you, as every day stacks, as every day stacks and you build momentum in your life, 
each day may not always get better. I'm going to say that one more time. Every day may not get better. I'm not, I, w- I wouldn't sit up here and promise that it would get better. But what I want to say is that if you open up your heart to change, you open up your heart to God, you open up your heart to good momentum in your life, you open up your life to other people, you get rid of those old, like Pastor even talks about it, get rid of those old numbers, get rid of those old addresses. When you start moving in the right direction, when you starve out those things that kill out the passion, you starve out those things that build you up. You, you, if you starve out the things that will build you up, you'll never get to where you're supposed to be. But you start feeding those things that are building you up. I'm telling you, it's not that complicated. Starve out those, starve out those things that are killing you and feed those things that are giving you life. God bless you.